Hello everyone a warm welcome to our radio drama based on a short story written by Selma Ragalov titled The Rat Trap an innovative project done by class 12 students of KVINS Dronacharya Cochin guided by our beloved teacher Mr Santosh Kumar Khanna page to English This is a story about a poor rat trap seller and an unexpected moment in his life Once upon a time there was a man who went around selling small rat traps of fire he made them himself at odd moments from the material he got by begging in the stores or at the big farms the business was not quite profitable so he had to resort to both the begging and petty thievery to keep body and soul together his clothes were in rags his cheeks were sunken and hunger gleamed in his eyes no one can imagine how sad and monotonous life can appear to such a vagabond who plods along the road left to his own meditations but one day this man had fallen into a line of thought which really seemed to him entertaining he had naturally been thinking of his rat traps when suddenly he was struck by a philosophical idea the whole world with its lands and seas its cities and villages is nothing but a big rat trap it's never existed for any other purpose than to set bait for people it offers riches and joys shelter and food health and clothing exactly as a rat trap offered cheese and pork and as soon and as soon as anyone let himself be tempted to touch the bait <laughs> it closed in on him and then everything came to an end the world had never been very kind to him so it gave him great joy to think ill of it in this way and became a cherished pastime of his during many dreary ploddings to think of people he knew who had let themselves be caught in the dangerous snare and of others who were still circling around the bait One dark evening as he was trudging along the road he caught sight of a little grey cottage by the roadside and he knocked on the door to ask shelter for the night Good evening sir um so- sorry to bother you at this late hours uh, if you don't mind sir can i spend this night here Yes yes why not come in come in make yourself comfortable okay i stay alone you see <laughs> and to be frank i was badly looking for some company I'm so happy that you're here tonight come on make yourself comfortable please here yeah please have it yeah i was saying you know i'm not married and all these years i've been living here alone It's rare that someone knocks my door seeking shelter. And here we are. The guest was informed at once that in his days of prosperity his host had been a crofter at drums to ironworks and had worked on the land. Now that he was no longer able to do day labor, it was his cow which supported him. That bossy is extraordinary. She could give milk for the creamery every day and you know, you know what? Yeah, I've got something to tell you. Last month I received all of 30 kroners in payment. <laughs> She's just amazing. What? 30 kroners, sir? That's unbelievable. Oh, come on. I mean it. Oh, you don't seem to trust me. Wait a second. I have it here in my pouch. Wait, I'll show you. Now tell me, thirty kroners. Do you believe me now? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I keep it here on the nail on my window here. Oh, I'm so sorry. The dinner is ready. 
I got so carried away. Come on, dear friend. Let's have. I've, I've prepared something really special. Uh, do you like fish? Yeah, come on. The next day, both men got up in good season. The crafter was in a hurry to milk his cow, and the rat trap seller probably thought he should not stay in bed when the head of the house had gotten up. They left the cottage at the same time. The crafter locked the door and put the key in his pocket. Thank you for everything, sir. Half an hour later, the rat trap seller stood again before the crafter's door. There was nobody at the cottage because the crafter was at the creamery. The rat trap seller did not try to get in. He went up to the window, smashed the pane, and got hold of the pouch with the thirty kroners. He thrust the thirty kroners into his pocket and walked away. Hey, please stop. How much is that rat trap for? I am in a hurry. Uh, this is not for sale today. What a weird guy. Anyway, I I think I shouldn't continue on the highway. Better I take the path through the woods. Yeah. The rat trap seller took the path into the woods. During the first few hours, it caused him no difficulty. Later in the day, it became worse, for it was a big and confusing forest he had gotten into. He tried to be sure to walk in a definite direction, but the paths twisted back and forth so strangely. He walked and walked without coming to the end of the wood, and finally he realized with fear that he had only been walking around in the same part of the forest. I'm in a trap. This huge forest is a big rat trap, and the thirty kroners. Oh, that's the bait that trapped me here. Ah. Oh. The whole forest, with its trunks and branches, its thickets and fallen logs, closed in upon him like an impenetrable prison from which he could never escape. It was late in December. Darkness was already descending over the forest. This increased the danger and increased also his gloom and despair. Finally, he saw no way out, and he sank down on the ground, tried to death, thinking that his last moment had come. Those are the hammer strokes from an iron mill. Yeah, there must be people nearby. He summoned all his strength, got up, and staggered in the direction of the sound. The Ramsu iron works, which are now closed down, were not so long ago a large plant with smelter, rolling mill, and forge. In the summer time, long lines of heavily loaded barges and scows slid down the canal, which led to a large inland lake. And in the winter time, the roads near the mill were black from all the coal dust, which sifted down from the big charcoal crates. During one of the long dark evenings just before Christmas, the master smith and his helper sat in the dark forge near the furnace waiting for the pig iron, which had been put in the fire to be ready to put on the anvil. Every now and then, one of them got up to stir the glowing mass with a long iron bar, returning in a few moments, dripping with perspiration, though, as was the custom, he wore nothing but a long shirt and a pair of wooden shoes. All the time, there were many sounds to be heard in the forge. It was probably on account of all this noise that the blacksmith did not notice that a man had opened the gate and entered the forge, until he stood up close to the furnace. 
Surely it was nothing unusual for the poor vagabonds without any better shelter for the night to be attracted to the forge by the glow of light which escaped through the sooty panes and to come in to warm themselves in front of the fire. The blacksmiths glanced only casually and indifferently at the intruder. He looked the way people of his type usually did, with a long beard, dirty ragged, and with a bunch of rat traps dangling on his chest. As the rat trap seller wanted a shelter for the night, he asked permission to the blacksmith. Uh, excuse me? Can I spend this night here? If you don't mind, uh, uh, it's actually quite cold out there. Hmm. Okay. In those days, the Ramso Iron Mill was owned by a very prominent iron master. He watched both night and day to see that the work was done in the best possible way. And at this very moment, he came into the forge on one of his nightly rounds of inspection. Naturally, the first thing he saw was the tall ragamuffin who had eased his way so close to the furnace that the steam rose from his wet rags. The ironmaster walked close up to the rat trap cellar, then tore off his slouch hat to get a better view of his face. Oh my god, it's you! Nils, Olaf, how do you look? I can't see you in like this. What happened to you, Captain? The man with the rat traps had never before seen the ironmaster drums to and did not even know what his name was. But it occurred to him that if the iron master thought he was an old acquaintance, he might perhaps throw him a couple of kroners. Yes, sir. God knows, sir. Things have gone downhill with me. Yeah. You should not have resigned from the regiment. That was a terrible mistake. If only I had still been there at service at that time, it would have never happened. Well, now, get up. Come on, let's go home. I can't see you like this. Come on, fast, fast. Let's go. No, no, no. Uh, I won't. The rat trap seller thought of the 30 crowners. To go up to the lion master's house would be like throwing himself voluntarily into the lion's den. The iron master assumed that he felt embarrassed because of his miserable clothing. Oh, please. Don't think that I have fine home that you can't show yourself up there. As you may have already heard, Elizabeth is dead. My boys are also abroad and there's no one home except my oldest daughter Ella and myself. We were just saying this morning that it would be nice to have some company for Christmas. And you are here my dear captain. Now you are coming with me to celebrate Christmas with us, okay? Come on, stand up, let's go. No, no, no. I, I can't. Oof. I think you are determined to stay here, Captain Ponstolle. But I feel so helpless. Half an hour later, the ironmaster sent his daughter Edla Wilmanson to invite the rat trap seller home. She came to the forge, followed by a valley, carrying on his arm a big fur coat. Edla was not at all pretty, but seemed modest and quite shy. The rat trap seller had stretched himself on the floor and was lying down with a piece of pink iron under his head and his hat pulled down over his eyes. My name is Edla Wilmanson. My father came home and told that he wanted to sleep here in the forge tonight. And then I asked permission to come and bring you home to us. I am so sorry, Captain Monstoli, that you are having such a hard time. No, I, I won't. I, I won't come. I think he has stolen something or else he has escaped from jail. Captain, please come home and stay with us so Christmas Eve, please. My father can't bear to see his old friend like this. Please come home, Captain. Please. It's a request. Miss, I'm very sorry to have bothered you. You had come all the way. I'm really sorry. I will come right now. 
he accepted the fur coat, wore it, and followed the young lady to the wagon. But the rat trap seller was worried about the thirty kroner in his pocket. That night, rat trap seller had his supper at the iron master's house and slept off peacefully. That day was Christmas Eve. Edla, first of all, we must see to it that he gets a little flesh on his bones. And then we must see that he gets something else to do other than just run around the country selling rat traps. You know. Yes, Daddy. Daddy, it is so strange that things have gone downhill with him as badly as that. Last night, I did not think there was anything about him to show that he had once been an educated man. Oh, come on. You must have patience, my little girl. As soon as he gets cleaned and dressed up, you will see something different. Last night, he was naturally embarrassed, you know. Just as he said this, the door opened and the rat trap seller entered. Yes, now he was truly clean and well-dressed. The valet had bathed him, cut his hair and shaved him. Moreover, he was dressed in a good-looking suit of clothes which belonged to the iron master. He wore a white shirt and a starched collar and whole shoes. But although the rat trap seller was not so well-groomed, the iron master did not seem pleased. What does this mean? This is not Captain Fawn's story. Oh Lord, I mistook him as my friend. It is not my fault, sir. I never pretended to be anything but a poor trader. And I pleaded and begged to be allowed to stay in the forge. You forced me here. But no harm has been done. At worst, I can put on my rags again and go away. Ha! <laughs> Don't think that's so easy, my friend. I'm going to call the sheriff to settle this right now. How dare you cheat me like that? Daddy. Don't you see? He's blaming it on me now. What the hell? Now I'm going to tell you, Mr. Iron Master, how things are. This whole world is nothing but a big rat trap. All the good things that are offered to you are nothing but cheese wins and bits of pork. Set out to drag a poor fellow into trouble and if the f sheriff comes now and locks me up for this then you Mr. Iron Master must remember that a day may come when you yourself may want to get a big piece of pork and then you will be caught in the trap. <laughs> That's not badly said my good fellow. Okay I don't want to call the sheriff but you are going to leave right now okay now get out. But wait, Daddy. I think he should stay with us today. Daddy, I don't want him to go. Edla, what the hell are you doing? Daddy, this is not fair. I am thinking of the poor man here. Please listen to me. He walks and walks the whole year long, and there is probably not a single place in the whole country where he is welcome and can feel at home. Wherever he turns, he is chased away. Always he is afraid of being arrested and cross-examined. I should like him to have, enjoy a day of peace with us here. Just one day, Daddy, just one in the whole year. It was all a mistake. Daddy, I understand. But I don't think we should chase away a person we invited. Promise in Christmas cheer. <laughs> Edla, you do preach worse than a parson. Huh? Okay, Edla. I hope you won't have to regret about this later. Now we come back here. You're not leaving the house. Sit down here and please have your breakfast. Time after time, the rat trap seller looked at Edla and wondered why she had been so kind to him. And the whole day, the rat trap seller did nothing but eat and sleep. Edla was busy making preparations for the evening get-together. After supper, the rat trap seller went to each one present and said thank you and good night. Miss, um, thank you for everything. Good night. 
please don't mention. In fact, we are very happy that you accepted our invitation and stayed with us for Christmas Eve. And the suit you are wearing is a Christmas gift for you. You don't have to return it, okay? Really? Thank you so much. Yes. And whenever you want to get good food and rest, you are always welcome here. That is really so kind of you, miss. Please take rest. Good night. It was the Christmas morning. The Iron Master and his daughter got up in a good season to go to the early Christmas service. At church, they came to know that one of the old crofters of the ironworks had been robbed by a man who went around selling rat traps. Huh, <laughs> that was a fine fellow that you let into our house. I only wonder how many silver spoons are left in the cupboard by this time. Daddy, please, let's reach home first. I told you many times to throw that beggar out, but you wouldn't listen. Where is that thief? Call him out! He is gone, sir. I told you, Edla. I told you many times. Now what do you say? He did not take anything from here. Really? Yes, miss. Ha! Huh. He has left a package for you. Oh, yeah. And the letter too? Let me read. Honored and noble miss, since you have been so nice to me all day long, as if... I was a captain. I want to be nice to you. In return, as if I was a real captain. For I do not want you to be embarrassed at this Christmas season by a thief. Would you please give these 30 kroners to the old man at the cottage who has the money pouch hanging on the window frame as bait for poor wanderers? Oh my, our God in heaven. This small rat trap is my Christmas gift for you, miss. If you were not there, I would have been caught in this world's rat trap. It is you who raised me to a captain. And in that way, I got power to clear myself. Return with friendship and high regard, Captain Monstoli. What? Oh my God! 